Raja gripped the steering wheel of his truck tightly, his knuckles white in the dim light of the cabin. It was a routine drive through the isolated countryside, but tonight an unsettling quiet had settled over the road. The only sound was the rhythmic hum of the engine and the occasional rustling of leaves in the breeze. But then he heard it, a faint plaintive cry, like a whisper of despair. At first, Raja dismissed it as a trick of the wind. He shook his head and continued driving, but the cry grew louder, more insistent. It was as if a child's soft sobs were seeping into the truck from the darkness outside. Unease crept up his spine, and his heartbeat quickened. Raja decided to pull over, thinking he might be imagining things. He stopped the truck on the side of the deserted road and turned off the engine. The sudden silence was overwhelming. He stepped out of the truck and was met with an odd, metallic smell, mingled with something far more sinister, decay. His breath came out in puffs of white as he walked around to the back of the truck. The smell grew stronger, and he noticed something even more disturbing. Strange, wet stains on the trailer. The air around him seemed to shimmer with an unnatural chill. The sobs turned into wails and Raja felt a cold sweat break out on his forehead. Shadows began to swirl around him, dark figures materializing from the mist. Ghostly forms with hollow eyes and twisted faces emerged, their cries echoing through the night. Raja's heart pounded in his chest, each beat louder than the last. He could feel the ghosts' desperation, their sorrow mingling with his fear, he was paralyzed with terror, but he knew what he had to do. The old tales told of a cursed path that ensnared those who drove its length. He had heard stories of drivers who never returned, their souls trapped forever in an endless loop. Raja realized he was caught in this very curse. Determined to break free, he made a drastic decision. Raja climbed back into the truck and shut off the engine, leaving it completely still. Then, he threw open all the doors, hoping to give the ghosts what they needed to escape. The reaction was immediate and violent. The ghosts erupted into a frenzied dance of light and shadow around him, their wails reaching a fever pitch. Raja stood in the center of the chaos, his heart racing, sweat pouring down his face. The air crackled with raw, spectral energy. As the ghosts swirled and writhed, the cries gradually softened. A calmness settled over the area, as if the very essence of the truck had started to glow faintly, dispelling the darkness. Raja closed his eyes, bracing himself for what he knew would come next. When he finally dared to look, the truck seemed to be emerging from a fog of shadow. The ghosts had dissipated, their cries replaced by a profound silence. Exhausted but relieved, Raja slumped against the truck, feeling an eerie peace wash over him. As he prepared to leave, he noticed an old photograph lying on the truck's dashboard, partially hidden by dust. He picked it up and stared at it in shock. The photo was of a man who looked eerily similar to him. A note written on the back revealed the truth. Raja's soul had been entwined with the previous owners. The curse had trapped both of them, and by releasing the truck, he had freed both their souls. Raja left the truck behind, thinking he had escaped the nightmare. But as he walked away, the ground beneath him trembled. A low rumble echoed in the distance. And when he turned to look back, the truck began to move on its own. The engine roared to life and headlights flickered, burning like eyes in the darkness. Raja froze, his pulse racing once more. The truck sped toward him faster than it should have been able to. As the glowing lights bore down on him, he understood the horrifying truth. The curse wasn't broken. The truck wasn't letting him go. It wanted him. With a final, terrible screech, the truck engulfed him in blinding light. When the truck was found the next morning, the doors were shut tight, and no sign of Raja was ever discovered. Weeks later, the truck was sold again to a new driver who unknowingly set off on the same cursed path. Story the end. Story number two. 
It was past midnight when Jack, a long-haul trucker, found himself on an unfamiliar road. His GPS had rerouted him due to a massive accident ahead, guiding him through dark, twisting back roads. The dense fog rolled in thick as cotton, and the air turned colder by the minute. Jack shivered and turned up the heat. His eyes darted between the cracked road and the trees that lined it. There was something unsettling about this route, something that made his heartbeat quicken. As Jack squinted into the fog, a rusted, crumbling iron gate loomed on the side of the road. Behind it, tombstones jutted from the earth like broken teeth. It was a cemetery, an old one, the kind you'd only see in horror films. Jack chuckled nervously to himself. Should have just stayed on the highway, he muttered, gripping the steering wheel a bit tighter. Without warning, the radio hissed, spewing static and half-garbled voices. Jack leaned forward, twisting the dial. But no matter which station he turned to, the voices remained, whispering, calling. He smacked the radio in frustration. As he glanced up, his heart nearly stopped. On the windshield, ghostly handprints began to form. Small, delicate handprints, as though children were pressing against the glass from the outside. His breath hitched in his throat. Jack slammed on the brakes, his truck screeching to a halt. He stared wide-eyed at the handprints, his pulse pounding in his ears. They weren't just on the windshield. They were everywhere on the windows, the mirrors, even the hood. Panic surged through him. He wiped at the glass with his sleeve, but the prints remained, like they were etched into the very surface. And then the whispering began again. This time, it wasn't coming from the radio. It was outside, around him, closing in. He could hear voices, low and raspy, like they were clawing their way out of the ground. His heart thudded wildly against his rib cage. He threw the truck into gear, his only thought being to get as far away from the cemetery as possible. The tires squealed as he sped off, but the whispering followed him, growing louder, more desperate. He glanced into his rearview mirror and froze. Figures, dark, shadowy forms, were standing at the edge of the cemetery, watching him. Jack didn't stop until he reached a truck stop miles down the road. He parked the truck, still trembling, his chest tight with fear. He couldn't shake the feeling that something had followed him, that those handprints weren't just a trick of his mind. He sat there, breathing heavily, until exhaustion overtook him. The next morning, Jack's truck was found, parked neatly in its spot. But Jack was gone. No sign of struggle. No sign of foul play. Just an empty truck. The police searched the area, but Jack had vanished without a trace. Later that week, someone drove by the old cemetery. There, amongst the weathered gravestones, was a fresh grave. The name on the headstone, Jack Thompson. Story the End. Story number three. The chill of autumn wrapped around Danny as he drove down the abandoned ghostly road. The road lived up to its name, twisting through the desolate woods where the trees seemed to whisper secrets in the wind. His old pickup truck rattled over the cracked asphalt and every bump seemed to amplify the growing dread in his chest. The night had fallen quickly and Danny was racing against time to make it to the other side before darkness swallowed him whole. His breaths came in quick bursts, the cold air stinging his lungs. He couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong. The road was rumored to be haunted, a fact Danny had dismissed as local superstition until tonight. The persistent tales of ghostly apparitions and strange occurrences seemed to reach out to him with every turn. A dense fog began to creep in, blurring the edges of the headlights. Danny's heartbeat quickened. The fog wasn't natural. It was too thick, too deliberate. The temperature dropped, 
and Danny shivered despite the heater's feeble attempt to ward off the cold. Suddenly, the truck's engine sputtered, and for a heart-stopping moment, it seemed like they might come to a halt. But with a growl and a jolt, the engine roared back to life. As Danny tried to calm himself, an eerie glow appeared on the side of the road. At first, it seemed like a reflection, but then figures materialized from the mist. Pale, translucent shapes drifting closer. His hands gripped the steering wheel so tightly his knuckles turned white. His heartbeat thundered in his ears. The figures were unmistakably human, but their eyes were hollow. Their expressions twisted in silent screams. Danny tried to convince himself they were just shadows, but the fear was all too real. The figures began to move with increasing speed, their ghostly forms closing in on the truck. He could hear a low moan emanating from them, an agonizing lament that seemed to seep into his very soul. Sweat broke out on his forehead as he desperately accelerated, the truck skidding over the slippery road. The ghosts' faces were now visible, each one etched with expressions of unfulfilled despair. Danny's breath came in ragged gasps. The moaning grew louder, and the truck's radio crackled to life, broadcasting static-filled cries. The ghosts reached out with translucent hands, brushing against the sides of the truck, sending shivers down Danny's spine. In a final, desperate move, Danny slammed the brakes, causing the truck to skid to a halt. The ghosts surrounded the vehicle, their mournful wails filling the air. Danny's heart pounded so violently, he feared it might burst. He glanced in the rearview mirror, expecting to see their ghostly faces behind him. But instead, he saw something far worse. The road behind him had vanished replaced by an impenetrable darkness. Panic surged through him. As he turned to the front, the ghosts began to dissipate into the fog. Their mournful cries faded, leaving only an unsettling silence. Danny's breathing was heavy and labored as he slowly rolled forward, the fog lifting and revealing the road ahead. The twisted road led him to an old cemetery he'd never noticed before. The gate creaked open, and Danny's eyes widened as he read the weathered sign, Resting Place for the Lost. His truck was parked in front of an old, dilapidated tombstone. The name carved into the stone was his own. The realization hit him like a cold wave. The ghosts had not been trying to harm him. They had been warning him. The road was a trap and he had been driving straight toward his own grave. As he sat there in shock, a final message appeared on the radio, its voice filled with sorrowful resignation. Welcome to your final destination. Story the End Story number four. It was past midnight when Jack, a long-haul trucker, found himself on an unfamiliar road. His GPS had rerouted him due to a massive accident ahead, guiding him through dark, twisting back roads. The dense fog rolled in thick as cotton, and the air turned colder by the minute. Jack shivered and turned up the heat. His eyes darted between the cracked road and the trees that lined it. There was something unsettling about this route, something that made his heartbeat quicken. As Jack squinted into the fog, a rusted, crumbling iron gate loomed on the side of the road. Behind it, tombstones jutted from the earth like broken teeth. It was a cemetery, an old one, the kind you'd only see in horror films. Jack chuckled nervously to himself. Should have just stayed on the highway, he muttered, gripping the steering wheel a bit tighter. Without warning, the radio hissed, spewing static and half-garbled voices. Jack leaned forward, twisting the dial. But no matter which station he turned to, the voices remained, whispering, calling. He smacked the radio in frustration. As he glanced up, his heart nearly stopped. On the windshield, 
ghostly handprints began to form. Small, delicate handprints, as though children were pressing against the glass from the outside. His breath hitched in his throat. Jack slammed on the brakes, his truck screeching to a halt. He stared wide-eyed at the handprints, his pulse pounding in his ears. They weren't just on the windshield. They were everywhere, on the windows, the mirrors, even the hood. Panic surged through him. He wiped at the glass with his sleeve, but the prints remained, like they were etched into the very surface. And then the whispering began again. This time, it wasn't coming from the radio. It was outside, around him, closing in. He could hear voices, low and raspy, like they were clawing their way out of the ground. His heart thudded wildly against his rib cage. He threw the truck into gear, his only thought being to get as far away from the cemetery as possible. The tires squealed as he sped off, but the whispering followed him, growing louder, more desperate. He glanced into his rearview mirror and froze. Figures, dark, shadowy forms, were standing at the edge of the cemetery, watching him. Jack didn't stop until he reached a truck stop miles down the road. He parked the truck, still trembling, his chest tight with fear. He couldn't shake the feeling that something had followed him, that those handprints weren't just a trick of his mind. He sat there, breathing heavily, until exhaustion overtook him. The next morning, Jack's truck was found, parked neatly in its spot. But Jack was gone. No sign of struggle, no sign of foul play, just an empty truck. The police searched the area, but Jack had vanished without a trace. Later that week, someone drove by the old cemetery. There, amongst the weathered gravestones, was a fresh grave. The name on the headstone, Jack Thompson. Story the End.